<laughs> this is my best friend, Cliff Booth. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Noga. Give me another one. Boom. So we're, we're continuing our Tarantino series of videos, and we're reviewing Tarantino's new movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We want to look at the relationship between the two main characters, Cliff and uh, Dalton, and how much they are similar or different than the other uh, friendships, male friendships, in the Tarantino filmography. Bing. Totally fucking cool. Grab that for me, would you, babe? So, friendship is one of the least discussed subjects, I think, in uh, psychotherapy in general and psychoanalysis in particular. I I guess that in some way we can try to apply some of the things that we know about couples to friends. Your problem is quite clear. <laughs> All you want is a dingo, <laughs> but you envy the train. Even though there is no romantic relationship, no physical relationship, I mean, physical. Yeah. They do have a physical relationship, but yeah, not that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, I just wanted to make it clear to the audience. Uh, well, they do have a physical relationship in the, in the sense that uh, they complete each other physically. To my right is Bounty Law series lead and Jake K. Hill himself, Rick Dalton. And to my left is Rick Stutt double Cliff Booth. I see a little silhouette of a man. He's got a moose, got a moose, will you do the fandango? He is like the physical aspect of uh, Rick Dalton. Uh, when it gets hard, uh, the, he is right. the one that is in the forefront. Right, right. Also, when it, get, when it gets time to, to, to fix some things in his house. Right. And he also moves him around, right? Like he is the physical body. <laughs> like <laughs> he drives the physical body of the car, you know? Right. There is some kind of like a physical dependence there. Right. But the dependence goes the, goes the other way also. Right. It's a symbiotic relationship in the sense that they both take on the part of uh, <laughs> they drink each other's water. <laughs> I hope you wouldn't, it's a you very wouldn't notice. <laughs> yeah. It's a symbiotic relationship in the sense that there's no separation. They feel like they can drink each other's water without... Uh, no, that's very interesting. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, they come together, right, as a package. I mean, one couldn't be without the other. They couldn't exist in that kind of genre anyway. So Cliff, his livelihood, he can eat thanks to his relationship with uh, Dalton. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. pays him so he can survive. Right. So it's, it's an interdependence. It's as if neither of them could live, survive separately mm -hmm. without, uh, without the other. We don't have it. But maybe the two of us working together at full capacity could do the job of one normal man. And each of us would only have to be like a half man. That sounds about right. Also, uh, Cliff gives uh, uh, Dalton uh, pep talks. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, remember who you are, but not in a Simba kind of way. More in like, kind of like looking in the mirror and remember that you're awesome. Yeah, and also Dalton uh, defends uh, Cliff uh, when uh, Kurt Russell's character wants to kick him out of the studio, he says, no, he's a good guy, he's this right. and that, he's, he's an army right, veteran. Right, you don't have to kick him out of the studio, you can kick him in the studio, in the studio as a part exactly. of the movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get creative, do whatever you want, he's just he's happy for the opportunity. Uh, basically, the Brad Pitt character is kind of like uh, DiCaprio's dog. So, Brad Pitt has a dog, and DiCaprio, has, his dog is not in a... I'll try to be dismissed in derogatory way. way. No. But he said, just go there, bring me this, mm -hmm. go fetch here, me fetch me this. The and, and the loyalty, you know, loyalty. you feel that he is completely loyal. The complete loyalty, mm -hmm. unquestioning, mm -hmm. always happy. Yeah. Happy to see him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> happy to hang out. Yeah, wow. what up? Come, yeah. come. <laughs> Good Brad Pitt. Good. Mm -hmm. so, so the fact that their relationship is based on them working together. Mm -hmm. This is a recurring theme in Tarantino's uh, right. movies. You come back to work for us, man. I can't come back to work for you guys if I gotta worry about uh, making some silly ass 10 o'clock curfew every fucking night. But I can't go back to sleep. You serious? You really thinking about quitting? For life? Yeah. Most definitely. Fuck. You know, either she's got it or the feds got it. Or, or, now check this out. What if she gave the money to somebody else first before Melanie even went in the dressing room? 
I would like the two of us to enter into an agreement. They're friends because they're working together. What does that tell you, maybe, about a very successful film director having uh, this recurring theme of male friendships with a professional foundation? Mm -hmm. They have chemistry, they like each other, but they're working together. After Jules, uh, Samuel Jackson leaves, uh, whatever, Wallace's, uh, Mr. Wallace's uh, f crime family, mm -hmm. he's not there anymore to, to have beaten Vegas back. No, and then he dies. didn't seem like they were going to keep in touch. What would they talk about? They got a name for that, Jules. It's called a bum. And without a job, a residence, or legal tender, that's what you're gonna be, man. You're gonna be a fucking bum. Look, my friend, this is just where you and I differ. Um, I think that, uh... <clears throat> Thank you. Is it still mine? Technically, it is my water. Yes. This came out of my faucet. Every person who becomes successful is somehow surrounded by more people, uh, somehow magnetic in a way to other people who want to, you know, be yeah. in his aura for three To be in his movies, either as actors or something else, or just like yeah. because he lives with a higher quality of life. Because when you see someone on the screen, you immediately elevate them to be better than you. Mm -hmm. Even on YouTube, you watch mm -hmm. someone on a YouTube screen and then you think, oh wow, this guy, yeah. he's not a regular guy, he's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you see him in, like bigger, like in the old uh, sculptures, you know, that they used to mm. make the characters bigger than they seemed like bigger than life. And here, yeah. He's a cool guy, I'd like to have a beer with him, you yeah. know. This Earlier guy. this week, you were at an event that honored Quentin Tarantino, um, that I, sounded like an interesting event to me because, well, any event that Quentin Tarantino's at is an interesting event. It's an event. interesting event, and if it isn't, it'll turn into one. Yeah. It's a natural thing, it's a common thing, but of course it's, it could be very difficult for the individual to not know whether these friendships are something that is yeah. uh, based on, uh, on real affection or... When, when he writes a new script, and I am lucky enough to, to be asked to participate, I read it at his house, but I like to do that. He puts a paper in front of me. He sits there. And, oh. and with Cliff and uh, Rick's uh, relationship, we do see that it's uh, complicated in that sense, but uh, we do get a sense that... Uh, they had to have this event at the end where he actually saves his life and his wife's life. Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> for the relationship to be cemented. Something that is out of the ordinary, that of course not realistic in any sort of way. And it's such a good friend. Cliff is such a good friend. When he wants to fire him, he says that's a very wise decision. Yeah. And he's not upset at all. Okay, you can be understanding and still be sad because how will you eat? Yeah. And after all that, he's such a good friend. It doesn't know, you, you just stay with your wife. I'm gonna go to the hospital by myself. You can come over tomorrow. I'm mm -hmm. such a good friend. He still tells me, you're such a good friend. He says, I try. Uh -huh. There's like no single complaint for anything. Go back to the house, do this, do that. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So this is not a real friendship. Yeah. This is not what real friendships it's look not, like. It's an asymmetrical relationship. I mean, in, uh, like in the relational psychoanalysis thing, we have this kind of dictum like uh, mutuality, but asymmetry, like between okay. patient and therapist. So uh, there you can also see that they have this kind of asymmetrical relationship. I mean, one is obviously, you know, the more uh, significant one. I mean, uh, Dalton, without his face, uh, Cliff Booth would not have a yeah. job and the money there's a very strict hierarchy there I mean but it's it's a mutual thing like they need each other they want each other uh, they don't seem to begrudge each other for this yes. kind of neediness right yes they they acknowledge the neediness and yeah. they uh, and they look like they have fun together right classic movie that you would be sad to admit right now you've never seen Gone never with seen. the Wind what? You've never seen Gone I've with never the wind. seen Gone with the Wind either. are you serious you I don't this well, oh my god you have an excuse <laughs> I don't have an excuse <laughs> Come with the wind or sound of music. I've never seen. I have I never figure, seen sound of music. What? <laughs> I figure. Have you seen it? I've never seen like, seen it. like a thousand wow. times. Like psychoanalytically, if we look at the like how it ref kind of uh, it can reflect a uh, like some kind of structure in the unconscious. It reminded me of another Brad Pitt movie, Fight Club. Right? We see the two characters. It reminded us. See, also we had another mm. video. Also reminded of it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. 
because uh, we had two characters in Fight Club. We had Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. We thought at the beginning that they were separate people, but it, they turned out to be one. Spoiler, if you haven't seen <laughs> Fight Club in the last 20 years. So. 1998. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. this is a huge spoiler wow. if, you haven't, if you haven't seen the, yeah. that movie. I look like you want to look. I fuck like you want to fuck. I am smart, capable, and most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you are not. So it's like two different self-states, but very split from one another. It's like a split personality, what used to be called a split personality. Now it's, it's uh, called a dissociative identity disorder, never oh. mind. But here it's like, a, I mean, it's not a, path a psychopathology, of course. It's a real life situation, but they do have maybe this kind of splitting in the unconscious. It's like couples when you start to stop doing stuff that your significant other right. is good at. Yeah, and if you get, uh, if you split up, right, another yeah. split, yeah. then uh, uh, you find, yeah. so suddenly find yourself not being able yeah. to do all kinds of stuff that uh, you're supposed to do. Like my dad mm -hmm. doesn't remember any movie he's ever seen. My mm -hmm. mom, he's, he, she has like an encyclopedia of cinema in her brain. Mm -hmm. she, he always forgets stuff. And once I thought to ask him, Dad, before you met mom, did you remember movies? And he thought, I did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So he just, like his, his brain said, you don't need that. You have that, you can outsource it. Outsource exactly. that thing. And then you, you, you get in this point of the completion thing, but it's like basically a symbiotic thing because, uh, I mean, there is no real separation in certain aspects. You know that if you... Go ahead, go ahead, I'm listening. No? You know that if you need something, then you can just take it from the other without uh, considering that the other might need it in uh, just a few minutes. <laughs> so uh, you need each other to be whole in a way, psychologically. In these uh, Tarantino male friendships, they are not really, really open with each other. Mm. God damn, Jimmy, there's some serious gourmet shit. Me and Vincent would have been satisfied with some freeze-dried taster's choice, right? <laughs> and he brings this serious gourmet shit on us. And when they are, it's awkward. I got a threshold, Jules. I got a threshold for the abuse that I will take. Now, I'm right now I'm a fucking race car, right? And you got me in a red. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying that it's fucking dangerous to have a race car in a fucking red. That's all. I could blow. Oh, oh, you ready to blow? Yeah. You can't say this hurt my feelings that now you're kick, uh, breaking my balls because I shot a kid in the head by mistake in the car happens to everyone. So in this movie at the beginning, uh, Dalton uh, cries for some reason and he gives uh, Cliff a hug and, it, and, and, and uh, Brad Pitt Cliff is all like awkward, like, okay, what was that? It's like this in, these inhibitions in uh, male uh, friendships. Right. So you can see like the men there are like giving signals that they are really emotionally vulnerable, mm -hmm. but they're not saying it Outright, they're going around it. Right. Hey, look, you two assholes, calm the fuck down. Hey, come on, what, what, are, we, what are we on a playground here, huh? Wow, <laughs> that was really exciting. <laughs> I bet you're a big Lee Marvin fan, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, me too. I love that game. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, sadly, kind of uh, accurate uh, for a lot of male friendships. Yeah. I mean, they say that uh, when couples separate at a later age, like in their uh, 50s, 60s, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. then it's uh, much more difficult to, to men because uh, they're not used to having emotional intimacy. The men? Without, yeah, the men with other friends. And so they don't only, with, they used to have more intimacy with their wives. I mean, not all couples, of okay. course, but uh, as opposed to women who uh, have, um, you know, a much more intimate relationship with their girlfriends. Of course, we know that it's not that men are incapable of intimacy and it's not this and it's not that. It's really a, a very cultural thing, a very social thing. But we do see in Reservoir Dogs, I mean, between Mr. Orange and uh, Mr. White, they have a very intimate relationship and like a very loving, you know, they don't love each other because they know, don't know each other. Right. But he caresses his head and... This is fucking scared, man. Can you please hold me? Yeah. There was a uh, one point, and I hope that I'm, you know, quoting it accurately because I tried writing stuff on my phone, no. but people in told me cinema, in no. the cinema, no, it's very inconsiderate, it's horrible. Very, so, very inconsiderate of you. You don't think of other people when you're doing stuff. Go on. 
Yes. Wow, I'm such a horrible. Oh. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> I brought you back the water. You you said that it wasn't nice that I was drinking your water. So okay, I was. So I you were right. Take back your water, please. No, thank you. I'm not thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> the recurring theme mm -hmm. in in the in all these male friendships is that even if they go way back first of all they don't seem to go way back but mm -hmm. even when they do it doesn't seem that the characters really know each other intimately mm -hmm. and the only characters that seem to really know each other is uh, Samuel Jackson and Robert De Niro in Jackie Brown the reason is yo Shit well, no you, more. you better fucking back off, man. Mm -hmm. That's maybe the saddest death in any Tarantino movie. What the fuck happened to you, man? Your ass used to be beautiful. Yeah, and he didn't want to do it. The only like uh, killing that the killer is like, I don't want to do it. I have to do it because you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you Noga thank you everybody for watching if you enjoyed this video and you watch it up to now uh, you should consider uh, feeling guilty about not uh, being a patron of got academy there's a link in the description and you can go to uh, patreon.com slash got academy and that will uh, just relieve you of your guilt and you will feel much much better a lot of really 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 objectively Super cool, exciting stuff coming uh, on our Patreon page. Boom. So be there. Let's make a video about guilt. Guilt in movies? Well, we'll think about it. Guilt okay. with patrons. It's a Gil. Guilt Kidron. Guilt. Guilt Kidron. <laughs> oh, oh, that's sad. Oh, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Okay, so see you next time. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna try.